Okay, so today I talk about experience God evangelism. First, I will talk about how to have this close relationship with God. Now, some people they might think it's hard to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, it's not hard. Amen. Because God wants to fill us. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is to have a close relationship with God. It's not hard because God desires us all the time. He really wants to have a close relationship with us. So it is not hard to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can do evangelism and we can raise up people's spiritual life. So tonight's teaching is very important. And also, uh, I will find time also to train you, have to practice, pray for each other tonight too. So please stay if you can. Stay and then we can practice. Now, sometimes people think of being filled with the Holy Spirit as falling down or some other experiences. But I would say being filled with the Holy Spirit means to have a very close relationship with God. And it's not hard. The reason is because God desires that. Let me use an illustration. Has anyone here ever really liked someone or loved someone, but the other person doesn't know? Like sometimes you like a teacher, or you, when you were young, you like someone of the opposite sex, and you look at the person every time you see the person, you're very happy inside. Have you had the experience, any one of you? I think many people have this experience. And then, in Chinese we call it secret love. You, know? you love the person secretly, but the other person doesn't know it. And then if you find out that one thing, that or the other person is also loving you secretly, will you be very happy? Will you have confidence to approach that person if you know that that person is also loving you secretly? Then you know that. You really, you know, you have confidence, right? Let me tell you, with God, we can always be sure that He has been loving us without us knowing it before we were born. He already planned to create us, to love us, that before we became a Christian, He already loves us. So when you know someone is loving you secretly, do you have any problem having a close relationship with the person? You know, because you know that person is waiting for you. Now sometimes you can sense that because the person looks at you all the time. <laughs> and you know that that person likes you. Now if that person is what God plans for you, you'll be very happy. And I'm using that as an illustration from human love to God's love. God's love is like that. He loves us first. And that is wonderful about God. So. When you pray to God, you never have to say, Lord, where are you? Where are you? Why didn't you come to help me? You never have to say that because He always wants to love us. When you open your heart and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I want you. When you learn to open your heart, you will experience it very easily. Experiencing the Holy Spirit is not hard. Now, why do some people find it hard? Because they're just praying with the head. They just say, Lord, feel me, feel me, feel me. <laughs> just say from the head. But Jesus said, worship in spirit and in truth from our spirit. All our spirit. And you can think of yourself, you know, having your mind, I mean the spirit and the soul. And the soul has three parts. The mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind, the will, and the feelings. So first you love God with all your mind. Then you say, God is the best. Everything in the Bible is true. And everything God does is good for us. So in the mind you say, God is the best. Amen. Now in my mind, God is always the best. And the most wonderful one and the only one that can really bless us so much, right? So the mind really say, God is good. Now I have met some people, they say, it's hard for them to thank God. They said, I cannot think of many things to thank God. I said, you look around, you can see so many things around you that are created by God. And you look at your life and we can see how God has blessed us. So there are so many things God has blessed us. So in our mind we say, God is the best. Can we say it together? God is the best. Everything God does is good. 
So when you have your mind really saying God is good, and then your will say, I really want to follow God. I want to dedicate my life to God. And then Felix, because when you look at everything around you, it's so beautiful, so good, and then you say, God, you are so good. I, I like you. Can you say, I like God? Can you really like, do you really like God? Now some people like their friends more. When they're in trouble, they look, you know, they look to their friends. But we can learn to say, Lord, you're everything. Let me tell you, in my past, there were times that when I had trouble, I'd rather go to play tennis, or sleep, or watch a movie. But now I know that God is the best. He can really bless me, so I really have the desire to come to Him. And I find that He really blesses me. And so in my heart, I really like God. When you like God from your heart, it's very easy to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Anytime you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you worship with all your spirit. Amen. Now what is the spirit? It's Psalm 103 verse 1. It says, all that is in me, praise His holy name. All that is in me. So the whole spirit, the whole soul, Worship God. When you worship like that, so when you worship at home, don't just say, thank God. Now, for many people, the prayers are like this. The prayer are like email prayers. Emails. Number one, God, please help me financially. Number two, please find me a wife or a husband. Number three, please make me healthy. Number four, please help me in all this thing. Give me a good job. Now, some people pray like that. They are email prayers. But when people pray like this, they don't necessarily experience God that much because they're just praying with the brain and they're praying for themselves. But when you really like God, you say God is the best and you really hunger for God from all your soul, all your spirit, then it's very easy for you to experience God. You just cry to God every day, Lord, you are my best. And when you cry, don't cry with self-pity. Don't say, Lord, I'm... Oh, I'm such a terrible situation, please help me. But rather pray with faith. Pray with faith is like this. Lord, can you say with me? Lord, I know that you're loving me. I know that you want to fill me with the Holy Spirit. I know that you want to bless me. So I can come to you in confidence. Now that is faith. Believing God really wants to bless us. When you pray like this, Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you, and I know that you're loving me before I love you. Amen. <laughs> and you love me more than I love you. Amen. God told us to tell us to love Him with all our heart, all our soul. But let me tell you, God has loved us so much. He loved us with all His life. Amen. Jesus loved us with all His life. He has given us His best. What He tells us to do, He first did it to us. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So then you have confidence. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First, we can experience God. That's the wonderful thing about God. God is not far away. We can experience God. Each one of us can experience God. In your difficult times, you can experience God. You can, in your good times, you can experience God. Okay, first, God can bring inner healing. Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 3. Now here it talks about the work of the Holy Spirit. Now some verses doesn't talk about the Holy Spirit. It talks about Jesus or God. But God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one. So what the Bible says the Father will do or the Son will do, except for Jesus dying on the cross. For dying on the cross, only Jesus did. The Father and the Holy Spirit did not do that. But then for all the work onto people, the Father did it, and the Father does it, the Son does it, and the Holy Spirit does it. And here it talks about that He will heal the brokenhearted. In Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, let's read. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to, poor, to the poor. He has sent me to bind up brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, 
but oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Now here it talks about the Holy Spirit is upon me, and the Lord is upon me to anoint me to proclaim the good news. That is like the Old Testament Great Commission to send us to preach the good news. But not just the good news. Because Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. In Matthew chapter 11, it talks about Jesus too. He said, come to me all you who are weary, come and I'll give you rest. So God doesn't just give us forgiveness and eternal life. That is the most important. Forgiveness and eternal life. But He also come and take away our burdens. And to heal the brokenhearted. So God wants to heal the whole person, not just the spirit. The whole person. Because many people need that. All people need that. All people need comfort and healing. So with the Holy Spirit, we can bring healing to people and then we can bring people to Jesus. And also raise up people to serve God. And that is what I'm going to do tonight. To tell you that, yes, you can do that. And that's what Jesus has sent us to do. That, the, you know, that signs and miracles will follow those who believe. That you cast some demons in my name and you lay it on the sick and they'll be healed. This is what God has promised us. Let me ask you, do you believe in miracles? Amen. Very good. Can you raise your hand if you believe in miracles? Very good. Put down your hand, please. How many of you have prayed for people and there are miracles? Amen. When you pray for someone and there was a miracle, please raise your hand. Not too many. First, I asked you to believe in miracles. And then you said yes. And then I say, how many of you have prayed for people and then miracles happen? How come there's such a big difference? Because many people believe in miracles, but they don't pray for people, it's, you know, believing that God can perform miracles. When we, when we see people sick, we think they better go to see the doctor. What if I pray for him and nothing happened? But it doesn't matter. Even when we pray for people, if they're not healed, it doesn't matter. But many people are afraid. If all Christians go and pray for people, and you see miracles, when you pray for many, many people, like 10, 20, 30, at least you get one or two or three miracles, right? When you pray for more, each year, how many miracles will you get? You get many miracles because it's God who works. And you see many sad people healed. Many sad people comforted. How many of you have seen sad people comforted when someone prays for them and they're comforted? Can you raise your hand? Now you should have seen that more often, right? So that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is something God has sent us to do. Can you say it together? God has sent me to heal the broken hearted. God has sent me to comfort those who mourn. God has sent me to bring joy. And God has sent me to set people free. And to bring healing. I want to follow God's command. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know why this is not responding fast. Okay? Now, peace is something that many people experience. John 14, 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. So, it's not just the peace of the mind, but God give you peace. That means you don't have it, but then God gives it to you. So, it's like passing the peace to us. This is what this verse says. That God can pass the peace to you. When you pray for pe people, they can experience God passing the peace to them. And that is what most people experience. Peace. And then release the burdens. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. That burdens go away. That is what many people say. Now please write down these Bible verses. You don't have to copy the content, just the Bible verse. So that when people say, well, I feel the burdens go away, and then you can tell them, Matthew 11, 28, that all you who are weary and burdened, come to Jesus and He will set you free. He will give you rest, so that you can tell them. And then the verse that I just quoted you before, John 14, 27, that's for peace. And also uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3, talks about healing, inner healing. 
And then here, joy and comfort of the body. That's what many people says too. That they will feel comfort of the body. Over the body. Psalm 16, verse 89. Let's read. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. So here it talks about the relationship with God. When David had this close relationship with God, he experienced joy to his heart and his tongue rejoices and then his body will also rest secure. But some people say, well, isn't it true that only Jesus come to bless us spiritually? You know, Jesus has said that lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. This is the healing of the body. So God doesn't just come to bless the soul and the spirit. God also comes to bless the body. And the body will rest secure. They will feel comfort to the body. Many people feel comfort. Some people feel very light. It's like floating in the air. Now, it has happened to me many times. One time I was in a hospital. I saw a man. And that was the only time I saw him in his lifetime. And I asked him what happened to him. He said he, he has cancer and he's going through chemotherapy. So he was in much pain. He said he was in much pain. And I said to him, Jesus can do miracles. And Jesus can do great things. Would you like me to pray for you? He said, yes. And then I prayed for him. Afterwards, I asked him, have you experienced anything? He said, I feel comfort to the body. The discomfort went away. And I said, isn't that wonderful? So do you want to, want to believe in Jesus and pray with me and ask Jesus to forgive you? And then he did. And then I told him how to pray. pray. And then he went home. And that was the only time I saw him. But months later, his daughter called me. She said her father has passed away. But one day, her father came back from the hospital and told her, a pastor prayed for him and he felt comfort. And then he went home and he had pain again. And he prayed again. And the pain went away. And then he said, Jesus really works. Amen. And so he has faith in Jesus. And then the daughter said, and then after he passed away, I found your part. That's why I call you. Can you do the funeral for my father? I said, I'm happy to do that. But before I do that, I'd like to pray for you and her sister because two of them called me together. And I said, use the speaker phone and I pray for both of them. And then afterwards, I asked them to keep the eyes closed. And then I said, have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then one of the daughters said, I experienced peace and burdens go away and I feel like floating up. And then the other daughter also said, yes, I feel like floating up too. And I brought them both to Jesus, to believe in Jesus, and then they were baptized in my church, and then, and then that's how I brought the whole family to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I have seen miracles all the time, and I want to tell you, you can do that too, because it's not us, it's Jesus doing it. And many people will feel comfort. One time, because in my church in the past, there were so many miracles. And one time, one sister asked me to pray, go and visit her mother, who had high blood pressure, a stroke, uh, 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 different problems, a kidney problem, and also the, uh, forgot the name. And, uh, and then, four sickness, and then she would die from the kidney failure. And the doctor said, because it was so serious that, uh, that there's no way, it, it doesn't, isn't worth, worth it to, you know, to take care of the kidney problem. So they would just let her pass away. But then the doctor would try to make her feel comfortable. And then so the daughter asked me to go and visit her. I prayed for her and asked her, did she experience anything? And she said, I felt comfort. And then I said, are you willing to believe in Jesus? She said, no. This, she said, I have believed in Buddha for many years, so I cannot believe in Jesus. I went to visit her a few times and pray for her. Every time she said there was comfort, but she was unwilling to believe in Jesus. But I prayed for all her fellow members, and I brought them to Jesus. But she was not willing. And then I was busy, I could not go anymore. And
half a year later, one day, suddenly I received a call. The daughter said she asked for a pastor here. And this is how she said it. The mother said, how come Pastor Yip did not come today? As if I had come a few days ago. But actually I haven't gone for half a year. And she just suddenly said, why did Pastor Yip come today? And then the daughter said, why did you ask for Pastor Yip? She said, when she, he prayed for me, I felt great comfort. So they asked me and I came immediately and I prayed for her. And I asked her what she experienced. She said, comfort to the body. And I said, ask her, did Buddha do that to you? She said, no. Then I said, do you want to believe in the true God or the false God? And then she said, yes, I want to believe in the real God. Amen. And then I brought her to Jesus and to be baptized. Amen. And also I asked her, do you want to take away those idols? Because, you know, they are not helpful to you. They didn't help you at all. You want to worship the only true God. And then she said, yes. And then we took down the, the idols. And that was the last day she was totally conscious. After that, she was half conscious and only part of the day. And I believe that it was the work of God on that day to remind her of me. I mean, that's, she just said, why did Pastor Yip come today? It was God's work in her life. And then, and then one night, she was sleeping and then she opened her eyes and then she looked and a ceiling from one side to another side and she was smiling. And then the daughter was very comforted because she has not spoken much because of the pain. And then, uh, and then also she had not smiled because of the pain, you know. When someone, a patient is in pain, it's hard for them, for them to smile. So she did not smile for almost a year. But on that night, she was looking up and then she was smiling and the daughter believed that she saw some kind of vision maybe she saw heaven or Jesus or angels and she was smiling and she told her sons and her grandchildren to believe in Jesus Amen. that she said God is good you believe in Jesus Amen. so I can see a real change in her life and I want to tell you that, yes, you can too have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you follow God, you love God, then your life can go higher and higher. Amen. You have fruits of the Holy Spirit and you have fruit of ministry. Amen. Do you want to have fruits in your life? Amen. You know, we only live once. Yeah. And your life is the most precious thing you have. Amen. If you see someone go to the ocean, and then he just throw his wallet in the ocean. We just try to stop him. You say, don't, don't, throw, don't throw away, give it to me. Yeah. If someone throws money in the ocean, you say, stop it. But what if someone throws his life in the ocean? Many people throw their life into the ocean when they waste their life. Many Christians waste their life. You can do a lot. Do you believe that? Amen. Can you say together? I can do a lot for God. I can bless many people. There's a purpose in my life. I don't want to waste that purpose. Do you really mean that? So I hope you really say yes. And you can have the power of the Holy Spirit. So here it talks about that people will feel comfort. It has happened to me so many times. I have too many, so many stories, I'm just going to move on here. And then, Psalm 48 also talks about comfort of the body. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And also, good sleep. I pray for people, there was one woman, when I went to the mission field, she had, you know, she did not have good sleep for over 10 years and then the pastor asked me to pray for her and the next night i asked people did you experience anything last night and then she went up and then she said for over 10 years i only slept for two hours every night but last night i slept for eight hours and also in this last few years one time a 
a mother took a daughter. The daughter was about 20 years old. And she has also insomnia. And she was going to college. And she had to stop college. And I prayed for her. And on that night, she started to sleep. And also, another lady, she was a news reporter in Hong Kong. And then she came to me. And I prayed for her. She said she had not have, you know, she had insomnia for about seven to eight years. And for six days before she saw me, she could not sleep at all. And then I prayed for her, and then she said, she went home. And then she fell so sleepy, she slept. And then she, it was the best sleep she had for years. And starting that night, she could sleep. I want to tell you, it's God's work. It's God's work. And you can have the presence of God too. You can have the Holy Spirit in you too. And body healing. Mark 16 verses 18 to 20. So they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them. And confirmed His word by the signs that accomplished it. Accompanied it. So what it says is. You know, the signs will follow those who believe, and you will cast out demons from those, you know, from people in Jesus' name, and also you will lay hands on the sick, and they will be healed. And this is the promise of God. And the signs, the purpose is what? To show to people, to confirm the word of God. The miracles are not the purpose. The miracles are the way, the means, to confirm to people God's word is true. And when people know that God's word is true, it's much easier for them to believe in Jesus. Are there people who suffer around you? Have you seen people sick? I hope you have that courage. You know, when I flew here at the airport, there was one boy who was, you know, who was out of control, who was speaking all kind of sound. And I went up to the mother and said, can I pray for the, the boy? I'm a pastor. And she said, I'm a Christian too. Yes, you may. And I prayed for him. Now, I didn't see any big difference. But afterwards, in the plane, I noticed that the boy was not making a sound. You know, while we were waiting, she, he was making sound. And saying all kinds of strange things. And for me, anywhere I pray for people, even when nothing happens, I keep praying for people. Amen. I just want to let God work Amen. through me. And you can too, right? Yeah. So when you see sick people, first thing is to pray for them. There were people who was about to go to the doctor. And I said, let me pray for you first. And after praying for them, they said, well, the pain went away. I don't have to go to the doctor now. Yeah. That has happened many times. One time, one of my church members, he was playing on a skateboard. And then he landed on a ledge with his hand and his finger was broken. And it was much pain. And then he went to the hospital. And then he called me in the hospital while waiting. And I prayed for him. And then after praying, he said he can move his fingers now. And then he said the pain went, partly went away. Also, I visited a lady who was cut by a machine in her work. And she could hardly move her fingers. And then I prayed for her. And then she could move. And then she believed in Jesus right away. Yeah. So I hope that you will have the confidence. And it doesn't matter when you pray, nothing happens. It doesn't matter. It's in the hand of God. So when you pray, you don't pray with pressure. You just say, Lord, you love the person. You really care about the person. You love her, him or her. You are with us now. Please bless him and bless her. And also, the Bible says that evangelism is not just by the Word of God. It's not just by the Word of God, yeah. also by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Both together. Both the Word and the work of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 15, verses 18 to 19. Let's read. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in healing in lending the, uh, the Gentiles to obey God, leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit of God. Now many Christians think that evangelism is just by the Word. But the Bible says, not just by the Word, here, by what He has said and done, 
to lead the Gentiles to obey God by the power of the signs of signs and wonders and through the power of the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit can bring signs and wonders. That is what the Bible has teach, has taught. You know, Jesus, when he said at the 12 and the 70, he said, go and heal the sick, raise the dead, heal the lepers. And, and then when he was about to ascend to heaven, he said that, go to the whole creation and preach the gospel. And signs and miracles will follow those who believe. So Jesus has set, out, set us out not only to preach the gospel, but also to have signs and miracles to follow us. Do you believe you, have, you will have miracles follow you? Do you believe that? I hope you don't just believe your pastor can do it. <laughs> I think many of you, when you raise your hand, you mean your pastor can do it. Someone else can do it. But I'm asking you, do you believe you can have miracles? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. And then evangelism by the power of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2. Actually, start with verse 2. Verse 2 it says that I know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You know, many people said in verse 2, oh, call me know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. But then in verse 4 and 5, it says this. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. So it's not just the Word, but also the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we'll go to the steps of experience the Holy Spirit. Let me... Uh, just explain this briefly first. Briefly, I will say it like this. Briefly is just to listen to the person, to communicate with the person, respond to his needs, and then when the person says he has some needs or some problem, and then you can share, I have similar problems or someone else has similar problem, and we have experienced God's help. Do you want me to pray for you to experience God's help? And the person is willing, and then you pray for the person, and after you pray for the person, you say, well, have you experienced anything? And the person says, yes. And then you say, that is what God has promised. If God has blessed you like this, would you like to have Jesus bless your whole life? And then if the person is willing, then you tell him the gospel. So basically, you find a chance to pray for the person and ask them what they experience. And when they experience God's work, and then you say, God has blessed you like this. Do you want Him to bless you from now on? And then you can bring Him to Jesus. Now, if that person is a Christian, then you can say, you can experience this peace or love or joy or comfort or the burdens, burdens go away and you can have this power to pray for other people too. Do you want to do that and bless other people and also bring people to Christ? And if the person says yes, then you can say, you pray more and you love God more and you will have the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's for evangelism and for training people to serve God. So here are the steps. Now this lady that here I'm praying for, she was crying out like that when we were in a meeting. He was crying out, ah! And then I prayed for her. And now you can see that she was laughing with joy. I had that video, not with me in Hong Kong, but I, you know, actually I should have brought it, but I didn't bring it. But it's online. I can find a video. Oh, this one is not. Uh, it's, maybe it's online, yeah. This one is online that I can show to you. That you can see the person was in pain and then, and then she was set free. I'm saying, yes, we can have the power of the Holy Spirit. So the first thing, let's read together. Converse with the person, listen to his or her feelings, and respond to his needs and feelings. Now this is very important. Many people respond by, just pray and God will bless you. Instead of saying that, when someone says, I'm unhappy. Now many people say, don't be unhappy, just pray. Let me ask you this. If something has just happened to you, maybe you lose one of your family members, and then you're very sad, and then you say, you tell someone, I'm very sad. And that person said, don't be sad, just pray to God. Will you be comforted? No. 
But if the person says, Oh, I know you are in pain. I know it's not easy for you. I know it's not easy for you to lose that family member. You must be in pain. How would you feel if someone says like that? You feel good, right? You feel that person understands you. It's very important that we don't just teach. Now many wives complain and say the husband, whenever the wife says, Oh, I'm unhappy. And then the husband said, pray. And then you won't be unhappy. Or oh, trust in God. Don't, don't, don't just stay being unhappy. So very common for people to teach when people hear other people talk about their feelings. So it's very important to respond. And one way to respond, you can say it with me. I know it's difficult for you. So you say it with me. I know it's difficult for you. I know you feel unhappy now. Say, I know you feel unhappy now. I can feel your pain. I know it's not easy to lose a member of your family. So you can, you can say, yes, I know the pain. And I know it's not easy. So it's, it's good to spend time listening to the person. Or you can ask the person, tell me more about it. What has happened? Tell me more about it. And then listen with care and attention. Don't be thinking when I can preach the gospel. <laughs> when you listen and when you think about when to preach the gospel, you're just finding a gap. But when you listen to the person and feel the feeling of the person, now this is very important in counseling. To listen to the feeling of the person, to feel the feeling, and you know the person's feeling, and then you can say it out. Yes, I know you're feeling unhappy now. I know it's very difficult for you now. So you can say it out. That's very important. If you can do that to your family members, they will like you much more. They will respond to you more. And when you care about people in the church or anywhere, and you listen to them and you say, yes, I know it's not easy, then people feel that you understand them. So that's the first thing. Second, let's read together. Share how we or someone else has similar problems and how we experience help from the Holy Spirit. So, now if you don't have the experience, you can share someone else's experience. Uh, for instance, maybe you haven't lost a family member and then you can say, I, I know someone who has lost a family member and she was very sad. And after the prayer, she really feel peaceful and comforted. So we can share some other people's experience. Number three, Let's read. Invite him. Now, all this actually is in your computer here. And pastor will have it. So if you are interested to learn, you can get it from the pastor. So now just listen for this part. For the Bible verse, you can write down. But for this part, it's too fast. <laughs> so number three, let's read together. Invite him or her to receive the laying on of hands. And then be sensitive to the presence of the Holy Spirit, including the swaying of the body. Now, when people experience the Holy Spirit, they will sway in the Holy Spirit. Some people will sway, not everyone. Now, you may say, where do you find the support in the Bible? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, when John saw the glorified Jesus, he fell to the ground. And then in Acts chapter 9, when Saul saw Jesus glorified, he was on the way to persecute the Christian. When he saw the glorified Jesus, he also fell to the ground. When the soldiers tried to arrest Jesus, and when Jesus said, I am, and then they all fell back on the ground. So, when the power of God is powerful, people fall down. But when it's not so powerful, then the person sways. So if you pray, you notice, you open your heart, you feel the power of God coming to you. You feel like swaying. That's from the presence of God. So, including the sway in the body, you pay attention to maybe you feel power around you. Sometimes I can sense power between the two of us. Even before I lay hand, I can feel the power. So pay attention when you pray for people. So it's very important for you to practice praying first, first with the Christians. And then you go out and pray for your friends, your family members, or other people, or strangers. So Revelation 117 here, that John fell down at Jesus' feet. And then, number four, let's read. After the prayer, say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? So why keep the eyes closed? So that the person will not be distracted. 
and then ask, have you experienced anything or felt anything during the prayer? Because some people don't understand experience. Then you say, have you felt anything? Why do I ask feel first? The reason is, some people say, why do you lead people by feeling? Why do you lead people to believe in Jesus by feeling? So I ask them what they experience. Because the Bible has talked about people experience God. And then many people were saying that the Bible has talked about Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And then when people, the Jews, many Jews heard about that and then believe in Jesus. And then uh, the miracles of, of uh, Paul, of uh, Peter, in a temple to make the, 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 uh, the lame walk again. And then many people were saved. So miracles can bring people to save when they experience God. So we can now say this together. Please keep your eyes closed. Have you, have you experienced or felt anything during the prayer? And then, here, let's read. If he or she experienced anything like peace, release of burdens, love, comfort of the body, or healing, we can tell him or her that this was promised by God and say, what you experience shows that God is real and He has blessed you during the prayer. Would you like Him to bless you, continue bless you? So basically it asks, God has blessed you. Do you want Him to continue bless you? And then if He is willing, then you explain the gospel. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. As prophesied by the Bible, He came to die for us. And then when you trust in Him, you can have eternal life. That He has took, taken the punishment of all sins. Okay? Now here, how to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, i just go through this briefly, very quickly. Let's read together. First, repentance and turn from sins. Because God doesn't like sin. Number three, read the Bible, meditate on it, memorize it, believe it, and obey it. When you want the Holy Spirit, you want the Bible also. Some people say, I just want the Holy Spirit. I don't need the Bible after I experience the Holy Spirit. That's not true. We need the mind, we need to learn the Bible and uh, let the Holy Spirit work through the Word of God in our mind too and in our life. Number three, have faith. Believe that God really wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. God wants to bless you. God wants to raise you up. Can you say the person next to you? God wants to raise you up to do great things. Your life has purpose. So have faith. God wants to fill us. And number four, praise and love God with our spirit, to worship in spirit and in truth. And then number five, hunger for God. I want God. Some people say, oh, someone has prayed for me, you don't need to pray for me. Let me tell you, when I see anointed men of God who follows God, I accept the prayer too. Amen. I accept the prayer. And so, hunger for God. Yes, I want the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then number six, follow the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit is for the Great Commission. It's not just, you know, the Jesus, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. And then number seven, lean on hands or spirit-filled meetings helps. But only for a short time. You have to go home and keep the presence of God. That's why last night I said, after you experience the Holy Spirit, go back and keep praying. Keep praying. Don't stop praying to keep the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then number eight, I think put down here, is to take care of problems in life. If you have problems in life, it's very hard for you to experience the Holy Spirit. So let us all stand up right now. Think of Jesus right now. Think of Jesus' love right now. Please move the camera. Think of Jesus' love now. Oh, Jesus, you're right here now. Oh, Jesus. Everyone, close your eyes. Stand up and relax. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm trying to help you experience the Holy Spirit right, right where you are before I lay hand on you. Oh. 